In a previous video, I showed the prototyping process for this sculpture. Now, I'll take you through the making of the finished piece. I'll start out with some red oak for the counterweights, cutting a board down to size to make the square blanks. For the thin plates on the outside, I'll need to resaw some of the stock. So I've clamped a sheet of plywood to the table, powered on the saw, and raised the blade through it to make a zero clearance support. And then I take the stock through multiple passes. And then cross cut all the pieces. Okay, I've got the blanks cut for all the plates on all the rods. I have a larger thin one on the outside and a shorter thick one on the inside. Now I'd like to cut them into circles. Here's the handy jigsaw table. I thought about a few different ways of creating a circle cutting jig for this, but in the end, couldn't think of a convincing way to do it. Sometimes the best way to go is just to mark a line and follow it. Alright, I got the six discs cut for the outside ends. Now to do the thicker stuff. Really helps to sneak up on the line gradually, as opposed to trying to cut along the line the first time. If that last pass along the blade is less than the thickness of the blade, you can end up with something that's not too bad, fresh off the saw. A good substitute for a bandsaw. And now comes the sanding. It's good to take your time with this part. I'll make the rods out of bamboo dowel. And it's the same thickness as the plates on the outside. So in order to join them, I'll use a nail as a spline. So I'm drilling holes in the ends of each of the rods to accept the nail. Here using a speed square to help make sure I'm drilling in straight. Now I'm going to drill a corresponding hole on each of the plates to accept the nail on the other side. Next, I'll cut all the rods to length. Then I'll take a set of nails, cut the head off of each one, and join the two pieces together with the nail in between. I'd like it to be a pretty tight fit. Okay, now drilling holes in the inner counterweights to attach them to the dowels. They're just going to slide over and hold on there with a pressure fit. Okay, let's see how they balance. Yeah, I like that separation. And I'll mark the balance point for each one. So I'm laying out the piece here. Each rod has a balance point about an inch and a half from the inside weight. And I think I'd like the hoop to be large enough such that the, the rods are separated about like so so that 
there's a fair bit of clearance when when a rod pivots that's going to give it freedom so it doesn't crash into the neighboring rods. So with this separation, it's about a one foot diameter. So I've gone and cut a piece of string about 32 inches to give me a circumference that's uh, going to give a circle about one foot diameter. And I'll lay that out here. That looks pretty good to me. Okay, so we'll go ahead and make a hoop. Got this thick spring wire, also known as music wire. I think it's going to be perfect for making a hoop. Then I've got some brass tubing that's just the right inner diameter that this can act as a nice splice to close this hoop. So I'll cut off a length of that. Okay, let's see if I can bend this. Uh, increase the curvature a little bit so that I can close it into a nice hoop without having much of a kink. This stuff is tough. Well, that's a little better. Don't want to lose my grip on it. Ah, okay. It's closing. I think this is going to work. Got ourselves a hoop. Nice hoop. Now I'm going to make the links that will connect the rods to the hoop and allow them to swing and pivot. I'll form some spring wire around a shaft that's slightly smaller than the diameter of the shaft of the hoop. I've got a drill bit that looks to be about the right size, chucked backwards in the drill bit to wrap the wire around. Now I'm opening up the hoop to check the fit. Okay, looks like this coil is just the right diameter to be able to slide on to the wire hoop and grip it. I think this is going to work for making the hooks. The links should be able to slide onto the shaft with a little manipulation. I'm cutting off sections three or four coils long, and then bending the first coil back to form the eye of the link. Because their coil diameter is slightly smaller than the diameter of the shaft of the hoop, they should grip it, kind of like a python wrapping around and constricting its prey. Okay, I think this design is going to work well for the mounting points. I've drawn out this hexagon to give me a layout to help align the links around the hoop. Okay, now I've got all of the hooks positioned around the ring. I have six for the rods and three for suspending the ring. So I'd say at this point the ring is done. Next, I'll use the same method to make links that grab onto each of the rods. And then each rod will have three links, one on the top to connect it to the hoop, and two on the sides where the springs will attach. Let's see how they balance. The advantage of these constricting coils to form the links is that you can slide them around to adjust and find the perfect balance point.
And with all the links done, I'll use some twine to make a harness that the hoop will hang from. Time to attach each of the rods and see how they hang. Okay, it's coming together. For the springs, I'm going to make a long run of continuous coil. And instead of wrapping it around a short drill bit, I'm going to use a long rod. So I can make a lot of stock at once. This friction spool that you've been seeing is really helpful for the spring forming process. I'll explain more in a separate video. I'm using a threaded rod as opposed to a smooth rod to give springs that will have a bit more separation between the coils. Okay, here comes the big spring back. I'm gonna let it go and the coil's gonna relax all at once. Now I'll cut this continuous length up into individual pieces and use pliers to form hooks on the ends to create each spring. It's got a nice feel to it. Okay, let's try these springs out. There we go. Wow, that turned out pretty good. I like how loose the springs are. They don't quite influence each other as much as I had thought from moving one rod. But the movement is really wonderful when you rotate the whole ring. Hmm. There is an issue though, and that is the way these rods are attached allows for slippage. So the rods can rotate and they can get off axis. Oop. And because of the way that and because of the way that they're attached on there with a coil, they rotate more easily one way than the other. I might want to try to think of a better way of attaching these links to the rods. I'm thinking this is not satisfactory. <laughs> and I thought I had it. So close. As you can see, the rod is a little bit twisted to the side. And it twists much more easily in one direction than the other, thanks to the, the coil that grips it. But I've got a design for a different attachment mechanism I'm going to try. I'll start off by doing a test on a bit of scrap dowel. I'll drill two holes with a micro drill bit and thread the wire through the first hole, then double it back, form a hook, and press the point of the hook back into the second hole. Then with the working end of the wire, I'll form a loop by bending it around uh, another dowel. Yeah, I think I like that. Now that that test with the scrap dowel showed promise, I'm gonna try it with one of the actual rods. Here goes. Okay, I've got the revised design here with a loop on the top, secured on the bottom with a, a U-turn bend, kind of like a, a half of a staple inserted there. And then the loops to attach the springs just uh, positioned in a through hole and secured on either side by the, the bending of the loops themselves. So this is a nicer looking design, I'd say, but it has the disadvantage that there's no adjustability. So now the only adjustability that I have is sliding the counterweight on the inside outwards or inwards to balance it or bending the loop a little bit forwards or backwards to change sort of the effective um, fulcrum of the lever. 
Now pulling off all the old links. Sorry to see them go. Now with all the upper links done, forming the links on the sides is a little more straightforward. Form an eye on one end of the wire, pull the wire through, bend it against the dowel, and then form an eye on the other side in place by bending it around another shaft, in this case a drill bit held against the dowel. And now the revision is complete. Let's try the rods with the new attachments. Okay, it looks like all of them are pretty well balanced, which is good since they're not so adjustable anymore. Now it's time to attach the springs. Okay. I think that's a success. <laughs> I decided to change the harness that the hoop hangs from to one made with wire instead of twine so that it matches better with the rest of the sculpture. I'm going to try that out here. Okay. There you have it. I think that's good for the final design. Okay, ready for finishing. I'll sign it, of course. And then apply a few coats of oil to the wood. I've decided to go with a dark finish on the plates. And I'll keep to a natural finish for the rods themselves. Okay, ready to present the finished sculpture. I'm quite happy with how this thing turned out. You know, in the prototype, the springs were tighter. And with that, the movement of one stick would more readily cause the neighboring sticks to move. But in the end, I decided to go with looser springs because of how it behaves when you get the hoop spinning. I really love the effect here with the undulations moving around and around the ring as it swings and articulates. I could play with it for hours. Now. The sculpture is going to be hung from a ceiling that's nine feet high, so the sculpture is not going to be reachable by anybody who's not extremely tall. So I've included a stick that you can use to set the sculpture in motion. And the final touch is a custom storage and transportation crate. Ready for delivery.